Hello my friends, in today's video we will take a look at Sony's latest premium compact camera RX107. Sony's RX100 is one of the 1 inch compact camera lines that survived the race of smartphone photography and I will say right away that there is a good reason for that. Mark 7 offers a lot of the latest technology that we already know from Sony's larger format cameras, especially when it comes to the sensor technology and autofocus. In this video we will take a look at the performance and the feature set of the RX107 and we will try to find out whether it is the worth the premium price. Premium compact cameras with 1 inch type sensor are mainly intended for the users who are looking for a better image quality and handling in comparison with smartphones, but at the same time they want that in a very small package. Besides that, RX106 and 7 also offer very versatile 24 to 200 mm full frame equivalent focal range. That makes these cameras very suitable for traveling, personal use and vlogging. They can also be very useful as special cameras for larger productions, as I will explain later. RX100 cameras are indeed very small. You can easily carry them in your pocket, so you don't have to think twice whether you will take it with you or not. RX107 feels very solid. It weighs about 300 grams, so it is not heavy by any means, but it has some heft to it. The materials are very high quality. The front side is metal and the back side is made of high quality plastics. What I really like is the screen attachment and tilting mechanism. That is made of metal and it is super solid. Overall, I can say that the build quality is very premium. RX107 uses the new 1 inch typed stack CMOS sensor and the latest Bion Z processor. This sensor is backside illuminated and there are face detection points on the sensor and it is extremely fast. Dynamic range on this sensor is actually very impressive. At lower ISO values you can recover a lot of information in both highlights and shadows before you start to see much noise. Because this sensor is backside illuminated and it has native ISO 100, the dynamic range at the base ISO in the real world is very similar to larger Micro Four Thirds format. That is very impressive, so big thumbs up for the dynamic range. Regarding the ISO performance, I would say that it is generally ok up to ISO 1600. ISO 3200 may be usable in low dynamic range scenes, beyond that you will clearly see some noise. That is actually very good performance for 1 inch type sensor. This shows the importance of backside illumination design in modern cameras. RX107 uses super zoom lens with 24 to 200 mm f2.8 to 4.5 full frame equivalent focal range. There is a difference in comparison to RX100 1 to 5. I generally prefer 24 to 70 mm lenses with wider aperture. But after using Mark 7, I have to admit that it is a pragmatic choice. I guess that the main point of these 1 inch premium compact cameras is to have all round package, and that 70 to 200 mm range gives you a lot more options. This focal range is suitable for landscapes and portraits, street photography, and even some sports. f2.8 to 4.5 on 1 inch is like f7.5 to 12 on full frame. That means that it is not particularly suitable for blurring the background and it has a bit of that smartphone look. That is always a compromise and in this case it favors focal range over the aperture. The optical qualities are actually very decent for a tiny super zoom. The sharpness is quite impressive. It is very decent even wide open throughout the zoom range. When you stop it down to about f5.6 you can get very good rendering. It gets a bit softer towards 200mm, but that is completely normal for this type of lens. As I've explained in my previous videos, the newest Sony cameras have in my opinion very good colors. They are quite accurate and very natural, which is what I prefer. With picture profile off, the colors are quite saturated and vibrant, which will suit general use. Sony's picture profiles are available on RX107, so there is a ton of options to customize the picture style. You can even shoot real S-Log 2 and 3, but I wouldn't recommend that with 8-bit codec and 1-inch sensor. Unfortunately, Cine 4 Gamma setting that I use on my a7 III is not available, so I will have to figure out different semi-flat profile. The video quality is very good. 
RX 107 shoots proper full sensor downsampled 4K video up to 30 frames per second. Thanks to the downsampling, it captures nice amount of real detail. I prefer turning down the in-camera sharpening all the way to minus 7 and sharpening the video in post. Resulting footage looks great in my opinion. RX 107 shoots 4K up to 100 megabits per second, which is sufficient for this class. The files are pretty solid, so if you use one of the flat settings, the footage will be very suitable for color grading. Thanks to that new sensor with fast readout, there is basically no visible rolling shutter, and any visible skewed lines can be easily corrected in editing. By default, there is still 5 minute limit for 4K recording, but it can be disabled if you set the auto power of temperature to high. The camera will get warm after some time, but it won't turn off. Overall, the video quality is great. As I mentioned, it uses the same picture profiles as Sony full-frame cameras, which makes it an excellent B camera or special purpose camera for Sony A7 or even FS line users. It can be especially useful for shooting in tight spaces or for the situations where the large camera would cause unwanted attention. Regarding the autofocus, that is probably my most favorite thing about this camera. It is basically perfect. It uses hybrid system with both face detection and contrast detection points, just like larger E-mount cameras. I can confirm that it works just as well. Sony claims that it is the fastest autofocus system on the market with 0.02 seconds focus acquisition time, and I do believe that. It is really crazy fast and 100% accurate with no hunting at all. It is definitely good enough for any kind of sports, and of course, the eye autofocus is available as well. In video it works just as well, but it is important to set the AF track sense and the drive speed according to your preferences. It can be super fast if you want to, or it can be very smooth. If you want to track something while shooting video, you need to set the function of touch operation to touch tracking in the menu, and then you can use the touch screen for tracking. Overall, the autofocus is a huge strength of RX107, and together with A7 III and A6400, it is the best autofocus of all cameras that I've ever tested. Thanks to that new sensor with super fast readout, it is possible to shoot up to 90 frames per second. Probably more useful is 20 frames per second shooting with autofocus continuous and automatic exposure in RAW format. That is possible with electronic shutter and no blackout, just like on the A9. The lens on RX107 is stabilized, of course. The stabilization is rated for 4 stops, but it is pretty good. It helps a lot with longer exposure stills, and it is even more important for video. In video, you can use the new active mode, where it combines optical image stabilization with digital stabilization in vertical axis. There it uses the full height of the sensor, which helps with the walking. That is especially useful on a gimbal, where the vertical axis is not stabilized. The handling is never really a strength of compact cameras, and the RX107 has typical 1-inch camera handling. There is no grip at all, and the surface of the camera is completely smooth, so I highly recommend using included wrist strap. The button placement is pretty standard. There is one rotating dial for exposure settings. Fortunately, all of the buttons are customizable. The shutter button is a bit too sensitive for a camera that is not intended for back button focusing, so it took me a while to get used to that. There is also a customizable ring around the lens that you can use for exposure settings or for manual focusing. The user interface is basically the same as with every Sony camera, so it is a bit complicated and not very well structurized. It also can't be controlled using the touchscreen at all. There are some improvements such as graphic interface for setting the function menu and the buttons. Customizable function menu and my menu helps a lot, so those will probably be the main ways of controlling the camera. I've been using other Sony cameras for a couple of years now, so I don't mind the user interface, but new touch optimized menu would be much appreciated. The screen seems to be exactly the same as on the A7 III, so it is 3 inch panel with 921 million dots. For this category it is completely fine. The brightness is very good if you set it to sunny weather setting and it will not dim in 4K. 
The touch screen is useful for touch tracking and zooming in playback menu, and it is basically all that you can do with the touch screen, so there is definitely a room for improvement. RX107 also uses a pop-up viewfinder. It is 2.36 million dot viewfinder with 0.59 times magnification. It is actually a very nice viewfinder for this category, and especially in direct sunlight, it is always nice to have any viewfinder at all. The battery life is weakness of every single 1 inch compact camera on the market, and the RX107 is no exception. It is rated for 260 shots or 70 minutes of continuous video shooting, which is ok for this category. The battery can be charged in camera, but unfortunately it is the old micro USB, but at least there is USB charging at all. To sum up, RX107 is by far the most technologically advanced compact camera ever. It is relatively expensive, but I can say that the performance and the feature set can justify that price. Backside illuminated sensor with super fast readout is excellent, it has the best autofocus system available, the video features are great, and I also like the active image stabilization mode. Basically the only two downsides are the user interface, which is typical for Sony, and micro USB port. With f2.8 to 4.5 lens, it is also not particularly suitable for low light shooting and blurring the background, but that is the price for having super zoom lens. RX107 is still a niche camera. A lot of users might prefer something with larger sensor or different type of camera. Sony has covered this price point with multiple interchangeable lens cameras, so they are not necessarily trying to sell the RX107 to everyone. RX107 is intended for those who want the most versatile and the most advanced compact camera, and those users will not be disappointed. So that's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope that you liked this video and that you have found it to be useful. Stay tuned for more videos and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content. I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down, if you would like to ask anything or share your opinion, please do so in the comment section and see you next time.